Good evening, everybody. I'm Pam Barton, the coordinator for the Northern Virginia and DC chapter of CHAD. And I wanna welcome you to our last lecture of 2022. It's that time of year again, how to savor, not just survive the holiday season, presented by Sandra Maynard. The mission of our chapter aligns with the mission of CHAD National to improve the lives of children and adults who are affected with ADHD. Our chapter is a volunteer organization of trained professionals who offer support in a number of ways. We offer a free monthly lecture series on the second Tuesday of most months, offer support groups for parents and adults, host an annual resource fair, and offer individual support through email inquiries. Now a little bit about our speaker, Sandra Maynard. A pioneer of the ADH coaching in the field of ADH coaching, Sandra Maynard has established herself as one of the country's preeminent coaches. Sandy holds an MS in health psychology and her success is based on holistic health and wellness approach. She's a longtime contributor to Attitude Magazine and has been coaching adults with ADHD to lead happier, healthier, and more organized lives for over 20 years. Thank you, Sandra, for sharing your expertise and knowledge with our ADHD community tonight. Sandra? Okay, well, um, let's put up the first slide. Um, you know, it is that time of year again. Um, and whether you love the holidays or you dread the holidays, um, there are ways to make it easier and more enjoyable, um, or at least less painful, let's put it that way. Um, I think the theme of making the holidays less painful is to remember um, something that I tell my clients all the time, and that is less is more and simple is best. Um, when it comes to all the different um, aspects of the holiday season, it's easy for us to get carried away, especially if we're excited about um, gift giving or we're excited about entertaining or we're excited about all the parties and events we, um, we want to go to. So um, let's, um, I've chosen six topics to talk about tonight. So let's uh, present the next slide. Um, I've already broken my own rule about um, simple is best and less is more because I've chosen six topics to talk about, but I think they're all relevant to, um, to the holidays. Um, the first one is gift giving and impulse spending. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about travel. Um, you know, um, lots of people go visit relatives over the holidays. And, and as, as most of you or some of you know, um, packing can be a real challenge for us. Um, entertaining, um, you know, uh, having a family get together or a meal or a football game um, where we invite our family and friends. Um, and and um, the fourth topic is um, really about planning. Um, we all have busy schedules, so it's important around the holiday holidays to um, to focus on our the time management aspect of of planning. Um, the fifth area I'll talk about is stress management and self care. Um, Anxiety and depression is a very are very common comorbidities with um, ADHD, and so I think that um, for anyone who has um, has um, anxiety or depression, it's most important to take care of ourselves the best we can during the holidays. And last but not least, family relationships. Um, Getting together with a family um, can be can be fun for some families. Um, maybe some of us love to see all of our relatives, and maybe, like I said before, some of us dread to see all our relatives around the holidays, or at least some of them. So, um, next slide, next slide, please. Huh. Oops. Sorry. Well, I'll keep talking about the first slide. Um, because there are so many things I'm going to talk about today, 
I don't want you to leave tonight feeling overwhelmed, like, oh my God, that's way too much. I can't handle this. Um, as we go through each of those six topics, um, think about which area you might be most challenged in or which area if you, um, if you had some coping strategies or tips to use this year um, might be better than last year. Um, so, so kind of laser in on, on, on maybe just one area that you want to, um, get focused on and, and get better at. Um, I know when I work one-on-one -on -one with a client, um, I often say, um, baby steps, baby steps. Um, a client may come to me and say, oh man, I got to I got to change this. I got to change that. I got, I need help with this. I need help with that. And so, um, you know, in the first session, we try to, to narrow in on what area might be the best area to work in first and gain some consistent progress in before we tackle those other areas. Um, you know, on, on the first appointment, I, I often say, I often say, um, be prepared to answer two questions. One, what do I need to know about you to be the best coach I can be for you? And that is, are you married? Are you single? What do you do for work? What's your life like? How busy are you to get to know you? And then two, what do you hope to accomplish utilizing my services? Now, if I have a client that comes to me and says, Sandy, um, oh, if I don't start getting to work on time, I'm going to lose my job. We know where to start. Um, but with other clients, we have to, we have to kind of look at the broad picture and decide where to start. So I want you to take a look at those six things we're going to talk about tonight and, and maybe pick one to a place to start to make your holidays um, uh, more enjoyable. Okay. Let's start with gift giving and impulse spending. Um, the first step in that is to um, decide how much you're going to spend. What does your budget look like? Um, you know, uh, I don't know if you've kept track of on a yearly basis of, of about what you spend on on the holidays or gift giving, um, but um, but make that decision. This is how much I want to spend. The second step is to make a list of individuals that you have to buy gifts for or that you want to buy gifts for and the dollar amounts for each. You know, some, some people you're going to spend more money on, um, some people you're going to spend less money on. Um, I would make a miscellaneous category for that too because oftentimes um, we make our list, we buy our presents and then oops, I forgot to get a present for so-and-so. Or um, maybe your kid says, um, oh, I wanna bring a present to my teacher and you forgot to put the teacher on the list. So, so have that little miscellaneous category or buffer category um, amount um, uh, planned for. Um, let's see, is there anything else I wanted to say about that? Um, when you do go shopping, well, let's talk about online shopping first. Um, I've read a lot how um, people spend less money with online shopping. Um, I know during the pandemic with Instacart, I did spend less on groceries. You know, I made my list and I typed it in and it got delivered. Um, but going to the store, you see things on sale or you see something that you wouldn't, um, you know, it's, it's more, it's a, it's more of an area for impulse spending, I think, than, than sometimes online shopping is. Now, um, I wrote shop online, unless, <laughs> the unless is the wrench in the works. Um, we can dive down that big black dark rabbit hole on the internet um, if we're not careful. Um, some of us are pretty good. We can, we know the stores we wanna shop at online. We can pick the item, read about it, put it in the shopping cart, pay for it and know when it's gonna be delivered. Um, other times um, 
we want to read a Yelp review on it. Um, so we get caught up in reading too many Yelp reviews. Um, we get caught up in um, thinking, hmm, I wonder if such and such a store has this particular product or present cheaper. So we end up going to way too many stores and, and you know, we can spend way too much time picking out a gift or an online item if that's our tendency to do that. Um, you know, I think for many of my clients, the internet has been, um, has been wonderful, <laughs> but yet it's had some real um, thorns to it in terms of um, distractions. Um, the other option for gift giving, um, is sort of that one-stop shopping, um, way of doing it. Um, I'm lucky. I live just outside of Boston and it's a quick ride to downtown crossing where all the stores are. And there's a TJ Maxx, a Marshall's in a home goods store right all next to one another. Um, and so one year I decided that, that I'm gonna do this one-stop shopping. I'm gonna take the day off, uh, get up early, go into town and get, you know, with my list <laughs> and what I'm gonna spend on each person and get all my shopping done in one day. Now, um, I'll be the first to admit the first time I did that, that didn't work. And I'll tell you why. I brought my list with me, but I didn't bring a pencil to check off what I bought. You know, you cross a person's name out and then um, write what I bought them by it. And when I got home, I had gifts for everybody, but two, of, well, I had gifts for everybody, but one person. Um, and I had two gifts for two people because <laughs> I didn't check it off on my list as I went along. So, um, so, so um, be, beware if you're bringing a list with you, you've got to have, um, you've got to have a pencil or a pen to check it off or, or that could happen. Um, a next suggestion is too late for this year, obviously, but um, implementing a year round gift box. Now this could be started after the holiday season when they have the holiday post season sales. Um, you can get some real good deals um, half off on a lot of things that they want to, you know, to get rid of in the stores. Um, I do know that um, most, most stores like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods, or some really high-end stores like um, Neiman Marcus or, or whatever, will have around the holidays sections with, with gifts, gifts in them, you know, um, and, and that's what I like about home goods. You walk into the front of the store and there's a pleura of gift baskets and different gift ideas to, um, to purchase for different people. Um, I, you know, I walked in and I looked at that and saw, oh, she loves coffee. Look at all the different kinds of coffees and that really cute coffee mug. And there's some hot cocoa in there. That would be the perfect gift for that person. Um, you know, you turn your head and you look the other way and, and you see, um, you know, see this um, uh, car kit and you say, oh, so-and-so just bought a new car. I wonder if they have this little emergency car kit in, for their trunk. You know, those types of gifts are really easy to buy um, in stores like um, TJ Maxx, Home Goods, and, and whatnot. Um, Back to the year round gift giving box, um, go down to Home Depot and buy a big see through bin and start um, collecting little things that are great gifts to put in the bin. Um, lots of times when we're on vacation in the summer, we, we love to, to go into little gift shops and, and just look around at the cute little things they have. And and um, that's the perfect time because um, we usually have extra spending money that we bring up, bring with us on vacation to, to shop in the gift shops with. And that's the perfect time to see those items and, um, and, and purchase them and put them in the gift box so that when Christmas comes, um, we, we already have purchased some things to choose from to give away as gifts. 
Um, I know when I traveled in Mexico one year, I saw these beautiful Mexican blankets. And so I bought a blanket for everyone in my family for Christmas and they all love them. Um, my brother didn't use his in the den or the TV room because it didn't go with his decor. It wasn't the right color, um, but he used it as a picnic blanket blanket when he went um, when he went to the beach. So um, so so think about um, you know getting gifts on holidays um, when you're on vacation and having that gift box. Be sure if you're buy if you're buying a gift for someone um, to label who it's for. Um, so that when, when the holidays roll around and you go to your gift box to see what you have, um, you it's labeled, uh, sometimes, um, sometimes I know I don't remember, gee, I know I bought this for somebody. Who did I buy it for? Um, so labeling it can, can, can be a help. Um, <clears throat> suggest, um, if you've got a lot of people to buy for and a big family, um, suggest, um, put it out there as a suggestion that, um, that, 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 that everybody buy for the kids only, but the adults draw names. That, that can help everyone's budget. Um, a lot of families have adopted that when there's a lot of kids in the family um, because it, it, it can, the holidays can we can rack up a credit card um, a credit card debt um, really easily around the holidays, thinking that oh I'll pay pay up pay it off in January, and then January comes and um, February comes and March comes and we're still paying it off. Another suggestion to make it really easy, and I did this one year, and I, I think everyone appreciated it was um, charity giving. Um, I sent out a little um, Christmas or holiday card to everyone saying that this year, um, don't send me any gifts because um, uh, I'm sending a donation to my favorite charity this year and in honor of gift giving. And, and that worked out fine. So those are just some suggestions to make um, gift giving and impulse spending um, a little a little easier. Um, next slide. Um, I'd say start if you're if you're planning a trip for the holidays, um, start booking your flight right now. <laughs> It's not too early. <laughs> Most of us book it too late, especially this year. Um, I just went on a trip and, um, you know, the airport was really pretty confusing and my flight del was delayed three hours or more. Um, they had us board the plane and then there was some confusion and they had us deboard and wait and then reboard. Um, right now, I think um, airlines are pretty well understaffed and, and not running as smoothly as, as, um, as maybe in the past they've done. So, um, so book, your, book your flight as early as you can. Um, hotels, you can make it some real deals on hotels this year um, because the entertainment interest industry has taken a big hit with COVID. And, um, and so they might be running some great deals to get your business. Um, certainly check out what Uber and Lyft are gonna cost when you get to the airport where you're going. Um, when I first moved here, oh gosh, it was about six years ago, I think I live a mile from the airport. And I think my first Uber ride to the airport was five, just a little over five bucks. And um, the last one was $25. Um, I was in DC one time and we were gonna take an Uber to the movies and um, the taxi was actually cheaper than the Uber that we um, pulled up on the screen. So, so check out the prices on those cause you might um, find that uh, if you usually use Uber and Lyft um, that some kind of transport um, van to the airport and back might, might save you money, I don't know. But, um, but do that and do that early. Um, when it comes to traveling for the holidays, um, you want a pre-plan and a post-plan. And I'd like to think of the pre-plan as, as both on the home front 
and at work? What do I need to have taken care of and finished at work before I leave? Um, especially, you know, um, fixing your email. So, um, so it tells people that you're out of town those dates um, and to contact someone else. Um, but think about uh, what, what you need to delegate to someone else um, or what you need to tell someone else at work um, so that they know what's going on with what you're doing while you're away. Um, and the home front, um, what do I need to take care of before um, on the home front? I always recommend um, or suggest getting caught up with the laundry and getting the laundry done before you leave for vacation. Um, because when you come back from your trip, you're going to have even more laundry. And if you're already behind, um, that can create that situation where we get overwhelmed and we shut down. And, and so, um, so it's being proactive around that, um, I, I think is an important thing to do. Most of us hate to pack and um, we, we don't like to unpack even more. Um, when, when you're planning your vacation, um, we like to, to spend as much time with family and friends as we can. Um, so we might, you know, um, book a Saturday flight, 5 a.m. flight, so we can get there before noon to, to at least have a whole half a day with our family and friends. Um, and if, if we worked up until five o'clock, six o'clock on a Friday night, um, that, that can be kind of chaotic to get ready for the trip and get to bed early enough to get up at 5 a.m. Think about putting, um, putting some buffer time in there. Um, time to prepare for the packing and the trip. And then when you get back, buffer time to um, unpack your suitcases, kind of settle in, look at the fridge. You know, do I need to go out and get some milk and eggs or whatever? Um, you know, when we, when we extend the vacation as much as we can, sometimes it can make it a little harder to, um, to get ready for the vacation and to get settled back in if, um, when we get back. You know, a half a day, if you could leave work early on the Friday to get ready for your trip. And then um, and if it's a weekend trip, let's say you're coming back on a, on a Monday, if you can go in just Monday afternoon instead of Monday morning, a half a day on each side of the trip to, to get through that transition period. Transitions are hard for people with ADHD. And, um, and so it's important to plan for that, to know that um, we are more scattered when we're in a period of transition. That's, uh, that's when we're most stressed. And that's probably the time we're gonna lose our keys or, or leave our credit card on the counter or, or do something like that. So the pre and post plan is, is good. Um, and I already talked about the transition time, the buffer time uh, before and after the trip to prepare and to decompress and get back to normal. Um, when it comes to packing, I think I've sent out an article um, for everybody on, um, on um, called Let's Get Packing. Um, and in that article is a, a packing list. Um, it's a pretty comprehensive packing list. So um, you want to take a look at it and see um, kind of what you know you need to bring and what you don't, what you know you can do without. Most of us, when we're packing, say, "Oh, what do I need? What do I need? What do I need?" Instead, of, we know what we need. <laughs> we need our toothbrush. We need our underwear. We need our medicine. We need our phone and charger. We need a couple of outfits. Um, we know what we need. Um, the problem is we don't ask ourselves, what can I do without? Um, and this could be like um, accessories, like let's say you've picked out three outfits. Um, now, what scarf am I gonna wear? What tie am I gonna wear? What belt am I gonna wear? What shoes am I gonna wear? 
Um, when it comes to accessories, especially jewelry and things that don't take up much space in the suitcase, like belts or scarves, you know, um, we we tend to to throw five scarves in the suitcase because <laughs> we we don't want to make up our mind which scarf to bring. I say make up your mind right then and there. Which scarf are you going to bring instead of bringing five scarves so you can decide later? Um, the more we bring in the suitcase, the more um, the more um, less organized the suit suitcase is going to be. So so make those decisions with the accessories um, be, while you're packing and not not saying to yourself, oh, I'll just throw it in there and I'll decide what to wear later. Um, makes it better if we, we make the decision. Um, Stress-free holiday, Christmas to New Year's. Um, you know, if you really um, are not looking forward to the holidays, um, take, a, take, a, take a vacation, um, you know, that avoid it in the sense of, um, you know, go on a ski vacation, go on a vacation and lay on the beach um, and not have to worry about entertaining or party, going to parties you don't want to go to or, or whatever. Um, a, a, a vacation from New Year's, from, Chris, from the Christmas um, to New Year's can be a real relaxing time if you're away from all the hubbub. Um, so that's an option to keep it, to keep it simple. Um, three day rule is always good. Um, you know, they say, um, you know, visiting someone is like, um, fish after three days, it starts to stink. Um, you may have, um, a family that lives far away. And when you see them, the only time you get to see them is around the holidays. So you do want a longer vacation. So, so it might be that you spend three days with the family if they've got extra rooms and spend some time at a hotel um, away from them. Um, it all depends on your relationship with your family and all families are different. So that's a really personal, personal decision to make. But certainly if you're staying with family and friends over the holidays, um, don't give up your me time, go for a walk or um, ask where the nearest gym is. So you can go to the gym and, and, um, you know, lift some weights or, or do what you'd like to do for yourself. You don't have to spend every waking hour and every minute with your family if, if you don't want to, if you need some time by yourself, be sure to take it. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> entertaining. Okay. <laughs> now I sent out an article that I guess I wrote years and years and years ago um, for Attitude Magazine called the Goof Proof Guide to Enter to Holiday Entertaining. And um, I, I could tell it was written a long time ago because it says, um, one of the things it says is stuff the turkey while the oven preheats for 20 minutes. And now they don't even recommend that you stuff the turkey. They recommend that you, you cook the stuffing separately than that. Um, but, um, but the article lays out what you can do if you're having, um, you know, the whole family over for dinner, um, what you can do three weeks before the big day, one week before the big day, four days before, three days before, two days before, the day before, and then the big day, the, the actual day itself. Um, the first step, and that should be done at least three weeks before, is to decide on your menu. Um, uh, having um, a big holiday dinner at your home requires a lot of planning. It really does. And, and Careful planning is one thing that can can make the um, event um, go much more smoothly. Um, is if you have if you have um, if you have a list of things that you need to do and when they need to get done by, and um, that that way of doing things is not always the most user friendly way for us to operate. Um, but but. Um, certainly um life happens um you know we can make the best plans and life happens and um we can't follow the plans we've made and and that's 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 fine that's life 
but going into um, a big event like a holiday dinner without a plan um, can be a recipe for disaster. Um, even um, even when we plan, if it, it the plan doesn't go right, it typically goes better than if we hadn't had a plan. Um, so um, the first step is um, deciding on the menu and then pulling out the recipes for the menu and looking at what the ingredients are and making a list, uh, you know, checking your pantry and making a list of the things that you need to purchase to, um, to, to make those recipes. Um, I just um, got off the phone just yesterday with a client of mine and she is already, <laughs> she's having the, the whole gang over for Thanksgiving. <laughs> and, um, and I was just so proud of her. Cause she's, uh, you know, I said, well, the first thing you want to do is plan your menu. And she said, I've got all my recipes out and I made a list of the things I need. <laughs> so I was so happy for her. I was just so happy for her. You know, it was music to my ears because um, I, I worked with her on and off years ago and um, years ago, that's not something that would have happened. So she's made a lot of progress over the years. She's gotten much better at um, planning and, and, you know, making lists to make sure that things don't slip through the cracks. Um, so, um, so I recommend that if you are entertaining to take a look at this article, certainly, um, you know, things that, that are pantry items can be bought way ahead of time. You know, if you're, if you're making a pumpkin pie and you use canned pumpkin, you can buy that tomorrow, you know, um, way ahead of time. Um, it's, it's the day of that that can be challenging. Um, this client that I was just talking with, um, when we talked about who was, and she's delegated who's bringing what and 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 what items she's not going to make, and and she's got that all set. But one thing that we decided on that was really important for her is that the day of, she was going to um, make sure that it was just her in the kitchen for the most part. Uh, for the most part, people love to come into the kitchen and sit around and talk with you. But um, as far as it came, uh, as far as making the actual dishes that she had to make that day, um, she would be the only one in the kitchen doing that. Now, she has some relatives that want to make some some appetizer type things. They're they're going to be allowed to use the kitchen the night before and make their special dishes and then put them in the fridge to heat up later. So um, so the kitchen isn't too crowded and she has as few as distractions as, as she can that day. Um, she also has um, two or three little kids coming. So she picked one of the teenagers to take care of the kids and make sure they're happy and active. Um, so they're not running in and out of the kitchen that day. And um, if you have an elderly person, um, you know, it's okay to delegate and assign someone or, or assign someone to, um, to make sure um, an elderly aunt or uncle or grandma or grandpa um, is taken care of, you know, someone to say, can I get you another drink? Would you like, to, would you like some of these appetizers? Um, is there anything I can get for you? Um, those are all things that can be delegated. That's, you know, when we, when we entertain, we don't have to do it all ourselves. Um, obviously, some of the advanced prep, if you're having guests from out of town, is to do that, shop, that shopping for the pantry items. Uh, you can make the beds and put fresh linen on the beds in the guest room way ahead of time. <laughs> Leaving that to the last minute can be hectic. Um, decorations, they can be done ahead of time. Um, you know, if you've got special china that you use for a holiday, um, family family china um, that can be washed ahead of time, and and you know the table can be set you know the day before, the night before, um, unless maybe you have pets with a lot of dog hair floating around, then then maybe you want to wait until the day of to set the table. But um, but think about the things you can do beforehand, and and not have 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 all of the um, preparation and whatnot left to the last minute. Um, I'm going to say again, simple is best and less is more. Um, you don't need to make 10 appetizers. Um, maybe a couple appetizers and a bowl of nuts on the coffee table is just fine. Um, remember that uh, the 
true purpose of holidays really is sharing it with family and friends, um, being there for one another, catching up uh, on what what their lives are like if you, if you don't get to see them that often. Um, going into the holidays with an attitude of gratitude can always make it more pleasant. Um, being sure to, you know, to thank the teenager um, who took care of the kids um, and kept them busy, being sure to thank, you know, um, everyone who brought a dish or um, an entree or, um, or just showed up to be there. Um, make sure that you let the people that you're inviting know how much they mean to you and that you're truly grateful they're there. Um, I love Thanksgiving because most uh, most Thanksgivings that I've been to, we go around the table and we all get to say what we've been thankful for. Um, so um, so that's a, a good thing to remember. Uh, next slide. Oh gosh, we've got a lot to get through here and I'm not going very fast. Um, I could talk for... Um, days and weeks on um, time management and organization. Um, but I'm just going to say that um, my best time management tip has always been learning how to say no. Um, that's hard for a lot of us, especially when we're excited about something and we really want to do it and we don't stop, take a breath and, and kind of process what that would involve in terms of our time um, so that we can say, oh, I've got too much on my plate. I really can't this year, but keep me on your list for next year. Maybe I can do it next year. Um, it's okay to make cameo appearances. Um, sometimes we, we have events around the holiday season that we really should go to, but we're not so keen about going to or they're on a weekday night and we get up early in the morning to get the kids ready for school or whatever. Um, it's okay to go late. It's okay to leave late. And it's especially okay, or leave early. It's especially okay to leave early because I can guarantee you, you know, none of us likes to be the first one to leave, but I can guarantee you, yeah, uh, if you're the first one to leave, there are probably about three other people there at the party are going, oh, good, phew, now I can leave too. Even though it's a great party and, and it's a lovely party, um, some of us don't like to stay a long time. So, so it's okay to make a cameo appearance. Um, check your calendars and your lists often and know where they are. Um, you know, cal um, lists don't do us any good if we lose them. So, so it's put them in a plastic folder or um, designate a special place for them so that you know where these lists are. Um, and that could be, could be helpful. Uh, let's see, overwhelm and procrastination. Ask what's the next healthiest choice I can make right now. When we've got too much going on and we get overwhelmed, what I've seen time and time happen again is um, we shut down and we start avoiding. Um, we got our list, we know what we need to do, but we avoid it because we're just on overwhelm. Um, and, and so, when that happens, ask yourself, what's the next healthiest choice I can make right now? Um, I like to do the HALT an acronym, um, H-A-L-T. I ask myself, oh, am I hungry? Well, if I'm hungry, I can get something to eat. If I'm angry, well, I can go for a walk and calm down. Am I lonely? Maybe I can call a friend. Am I tired? Maybe I need to take a nap. Um, there's always a toolbox, a tool in your toolbox that you can reach for when you get to that place where you feel overwhelmed or you start spinning out of control. Um, when when things seem like there's too much on your plate to do, um, break that down into the smallest possible step. Um, if you're looking at a pile of presents you bought and it, time is ticking away and you know they got to be wrapped, um, 
get the wrapping paper out and get the wrapping supplies out, you know, break it down, do one part of it. Phew, that part's done. Um, sometimes what happens when we do that first easy piece, we start to get on a roll and we can do the rest of the pieces that go along with it. We can finish wrapping the pre presents because we've gotten started on it just by getting out the wrapping paper. Um, years ago when I, um, when I was training for um, Boston to New York ride for AIDS, um, I had to put in a lot of miles on the bicycle and um, I'm not a morning person. So I had to get up extremely early to be able to ride my bike to work 20 miles away. And that was getting up and getting going was really hard for me to do. Um, but what I found was if I put, if I took a shower at night and put my bike clothes on and went to bed, when my alarm clock went off, I had one thing done already. <laughs> I didn't have to take a shower and I had my bike clothes on. <laughs> For some reason, that one simple step helped me. Um, and, you know, that that strategy isn't going to work for everybody, um, you know, but um, but I have a client who um, she loves to swim, but she procrastinates swimming all the time. Um, but she puts her bathing suit on under her clothes and she is more likely to get that swim in during the day if she's got her bathing suit on under her clothes than if she hasn't. So so think of that one little step that can push you forward with doing something that you want to do that might get procrastinated and not, and not done. Um, certainly if there's an emotional um, aspect to our procrastination, whether um, you know we have extreme fear or anger or shame around something that, that's causing us to procrastinate, that's a therapeutic intervention. And, and um, you know, we can, working with a coach, you can, um, you can put together strategies to use to cope better with your ADHD. But um, if those strategies, um, if there's an emotional aspect that's preventing you from moving forward, that should be taken care of first. Um, all right, next slide. This is still more on um, a busy schedule and um, time management. Um, when we've got a lot to do, um, we tend to get into that um, analysis of, para you know, paralysis of analysis state. Um, things are spinning around in our mind and and it becomes very hard to make decisions. I know um, um, on a bad day, um, you know, at the end of the day, we can feel like we've accomplished nothing because we haven't, um, we haven't been able to make good decisions and commitments to sticking with something long enough to finish it. Um, you know, I have ADD myself um, and I have very good coping skills. Um, and that's why I help others <laughs> improve their coping skills for ADHD. Um, and I think on a scale of one to 10, I, I put my ADHD at about a five or a six. Um, but if I haven't gotten enough sleep and I haven't taken care of myself and I haven't exercised or there's something really stressful going on in my life, I put my ADHD at a 10. And those are the days that can, that can feel um, really bad and, and, and really put us in that um, start to put us in that downward spiral where it just gets worse and worse and worse. Um, and that doesn't need to happen. When we take a look at, when we're always looking at how much there is to do <laughs> instead of, um, or how much we didn't get done, instead of looking at what we did get done, um, the downward spiral can go pretty fast. I had a client years ago who, who was pretty good at work. She, her work was very structured. Uh, she 
punched in, knew what to do, when to do it, how to do it, punched out. But the home front was the, the place that was problematic. Um, the laundry was piling up. There were too many toys in the kids' room and which ones do you give, give away and which ones do you keep and, and how do I plan meals and grocery shopping was hard. <laughs> and, and it was just chaos on the home front. And um, so I had daily check-ins with her. She would leave me a voicemail message um, saying, um, this is what I did today. You know, on a weekly basis, we met and we decided these are the things we want to work on this week. So every, every day she'd leave me a voicemail message at the end of the evening and say, this is what I did today. There was one thing on her to-do list that was on her to-do list forever and a day. And that was get the, get a red wine spot out of the living room rug. <laughs> and one night, she, um, she called me and she said, oh, you'll never guess what I did today. And she said, when I tell you, you're going to be jumping up and down. She said, I got that spot out of the living room rug. And she was right. I was jumping up and down. And she said, but if I told my mother that, she would have said, it's about time. That's what's hard about having ADHD sometimes is, um, you know, we don't feel understood and we feel judged by other people. Um, don't go down that path of judging yourself um, when you don't get something done. Um, pat yourself on the back when you do get something done. You know, if I have a client whose goal is to get to work on time, and um, at the end of the week, um, she got to work or he got to work one day that week. I say, hey, one day, go for it. Let's try for two. You know, never diminish or minimize your own accomplishments when you set out with a plan and that plan doesn't work the way you want that plan to work. Look for those things that you've done that made that plan work the best you could make that plan work that day. Um, and so um, when it comes to um, when we're when we're overwhelmed and it comes to making decisions, sometimes it's a simple decision, sometimes it's a big decision, sometimes it's a hard decision. Um, you want to um, carefully um, ask yourself, does it need to be done? And if it does need to be done, does it need to be done by you? Maybe you're part of a PTA group and somebody else in that PTA can do it. Um, maybe somebody else in your family can do it. Um, not everything has to be done by you all the time just because you've done it in the past. Um, does this need to be done by me now? There may be things that can wait to be done after the holidays. Um, you know, um, when I start working with clients, usually it's, we work on daily habits and routines and planning. Then once we start to get that better at that, we look at the week. Let's start looking at weekly planning. And then we, once we get better at that, we can begin to look at, okay, what are those things I need to do every month? What, and then after that, it's like, what are those things that I need to do once or twice a year? Um, and, and start to be proactive with those kinds of things. Um, advantages, disadvantages, and consequences. Um, if it's a tough decision, um, write it down. Uh, you know, make, get out that legal, yellow legal pad and make a list. Um, the pros and the cons of going away over the holidays. <laughs> you know, it's kind of late in the year to make that decision now, but but let's say you're thinking about do, doing that next year. You, you're just going to take off for the holidays and get the heck out of town. Um, you you want to make a, and you're not sure whether that'd be a good thing or a bad thing to do. Maybe your family will miss you. Maybe, um, maybe they'll think you're, you don't care about spending the holidays with them. And it's a hard decision. Write it down, the pros of doing it and the cons of doing it. Uh, our fast, our mind goes fast and furious. We can think of far too many things far too fast. Writing something down slows down our thoughts and allows us to process them better. Plus it's in black and white. 
um, you know, you've, you've written it down and it's in black and white. It's not swirling around in your mind anymore. Um, and um, when it comes to a, a decision-making, pick three criteria to base your decision on. What are the most three important things? That'll help you narrow down your choices. Because most of us within ADD, we can think of too many options and too many permutations of those options. And we just get overwhelmed and we put, put off making the decision. The decision never gets made because it's just too hard for us to do. Um, define your objective. Um, what's the objective in what you're doing? Um, I, I, I run across this with voicemail messages. Um, someone will call me to cancel an appointment and they start by saying, um, oh, I got up this morning and the dog puked down the rug and then I was late dropping my daughter off at, at, at daycare and blah, 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 blah. And um, oh, I've got a chat here, I've got to read. And then two minutes later, it's, I have to cancel my appointment. If you think of your objective, um, can I read this? Oh, wait, okay, 15 minutes left, yeah. Um, if you think of the objective, in what you wanna do, you're more likely to be able to stay on track than, um, than, than not. Also take a look at, is perfectionism interfering with, um, with your decision-making? Most of us, when asked if we're perfectionistic, um, will say, no, I'm not a perfectionistic. Um, but there are areas that, that uh, you know, that we tend to do too much and take too much time doing them because of perfectionism. Next slide. And I'll buzz through these last ones because we're almost out of time here. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm taking so long. Um, stress management and self-care. Um, I have a very holistic approach to how I work with clients. If you're not taking care of yours, if you're taking care of yourself, you're building a firm foundation up upon which to um, achieve your other goals. And during the holidays, it's especially important um, for you to do that. Remember that the that family and friends are the most important part of the holiday. Um, and, um, and it's not, um, you know, all the trimmings that go with it sometimes that make it a special time. It's, it's being with your family and friends. Journaling and making a gratitude list can, can be helpful. Um, knowing that perfect is the enemy of good can be helpful. Um, meditation, most of my clients have said, oh, Sandy, I can't meditate, I can't sit still. Um, there's walking meditations you can do. Um, there's really short one minute meditations that you can do. Um, but pick some, some type of meditation if, if you tend to get anxious or worry a lot that that's um, comfortable for you to do. I've listened to a lot of meditation tapes and um, the voice has to, you know, some voices on meditation tapes can be can grating to you. Um, my voice can be grating to you. Um, pick one where the voice uh, that's speaking the meditation is comfortable for you to listen at and that you like. Um, and that may take a while to find one that's good for you. Uh, be sure to get your eight hours of sleep. Um, exercise is always good. And um, nutrition's a little hard around the holidays because there's so many treats and sweets out there, um, but, but do the best you can with that. Next slide, please. Ah, family relationships. This one's easy. Don't talk politics or religion. That's a no-no. Um, there might be some uh, new members of the family, maybe um, a cousin or an aunt or an uncle or somebody in the family just got married and they don't know the family yet. So think of some icebreaker questions for the whole family to participate in to, to get to know one another uh, uh, in the new family member. I think one of the funnest ones that I had recently at an icebreaker was, what's your favorite type of potato? <laughs> whether it be mashed potatoes or potato chips or french fries um but 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 go into a family gathering with a list of questions um to ask that will steer away from politics and religion if someone goes there um safe topics are vacations what did you do on vacation um pets people love to talk about their pets um 
movies and Netflix, what you've seen lately, music, uh, you know, what do you think of so-and-so's new album? Um, hobbies are a safe topic to talk about. Um, you know, what's going on in your book club, um, fashion, design, uh, pick safe topics. Um, certainly um, going out for a walk after a nice big meal is a good activity. Um, we're back to the three-day rule, um, unless you have a hotel nearby you'd like to stay in. Um, avoid gossip. Many times we're not aware we're gossiping because we're trying to um, fill somebody in on what's going on with someone else. Um, you know, um, we we um, the gossip is disguised as sort of like a helpful criticism um be careful with that there's there's some gray areas there um we all want to be helpful to family and friends but um we can certainly do that without gossiping or um or or talking about things that um that someone else doesn't know about um you know it, they'll know about it at the right time and the right place when when they need to um promote harmony, find something nice to say about everyone. Um, you know, um, look, look for compliment giving, um, and you'll, you'll find that you'll receive compliments too. Uh, last but not least, um, you know, um, we, we've all got an uncle in the family that rubs us the wrong way, you know, letting our uncle be our uncle, knowing we're not going to change him. Don't go there. Don't go there. Um, you know, I had a client who, um, who, whose brother annoyed her to no end until she just finally accepted that her brother's going to be her brother and that's okay. She loves him anyway. So, um, I'm going to end with that and we'll, um, we'll open it up to